headlines, and it all starts with the mess that is the Jets. Look at them. They're arguing on the sidelines. Joe Namath says that Zach Wilson is disgusting. And then we have this from Aaron Rodgers. We just need to grow up a little bit on offense and not point fingers at each other. This part I love. I feel like if I was there, some of these things wouldn't be yeah, happening. You think yeah, because yeah. Scott Wilson yeah. wouldn't be yelling at his quarterback right. on the sideline. And they'd also right. be winning football games. Now, Craig, with everything that's happening, yeah. and Trevor Simeon, what do they need to do to turn this around? Get a quarterback who can play football. I mean, it ain't that hard. The defense is good, not, maybe not as good right. as they think about themselves. And you have some legitimate players on offense. You have an average that's being kind offensive line, which is now in shatters. You have guys moving all over the place. Right tackle's playing left tackle. Left tackle's playing right guard. Right guard's <laughs> playing right tackle. Only the center never changes with them. You killed one quarterback, four plays into it. You damn near killed another quarterback uh, against uh, the Bills this past Sunday. But it's easy to sit there at home at Malibu and uh, talk about what wouldn't be happening Come if you were on the not, sideline. Not coming from you. Yeah, not I gotta your say it, guy. Blacks. I gotta say it. Oh, it's very that's simple. The Jets didn't lose because Garrett Wilson's frustrated. The Jets didn't lose because third string running back Michael Carter got into a tip with his running backs coach, who he adores and has a great relationship with. The Jets lost because A, they have a quarterback that can't play quarterback in the NFL yep. and B <clears throat> thus far three games in to the Nathaniel Hackett offensive coordinator role with the New York Jets we've shown an absolute inability to make changes on the fly to adapt to what the defense is doing against us we didn't do it against Buffalo to be fair uh, Josh Allen gave us that win. We obviously didn't do it against Dallas. We got manhandled by them and you saw it happen against the Buffalo Bills. To be fair there were some play calls that are money good, and Zach just didn't see the open receiver or he didn't have time to make a play. So I don't put it all on Hackett, but it's a calamity of errors. It's the quarterback here. It's the offensive line there. It's the play calling here. And what I'm trying to figure out, as guys who live their entire lives in the locker room, when the head coach has the struggling players back publicly, and I'm assuming privately also, amongst the guys – at what point do you guys say, yo, coach, enough's enough. Yeah. Why are you still backing that guy? Especially the defense, right? And the thing about this defense, which I feel sorry for, they're still growing. So now when you hear Robert Sala call out this defense, say, hey, if you play better, we come out with a win. They can't play any better because the New England Patriots missed two field goals, right? right. They weren't great. They weren't this, uh, this amazing offense. No uh, sacks, no, no turnovers. Sacks. So, but even so, my point is you're putting so much pressure on this defense to be the world beaters. Well, all they have to do is just do what they yeah, can do. Yeah, here's the do. thing. When you announce that you're world beaters, when you like to walk and peacock you, around. You announced it too. I did. Yeah, I bought yeah, into yeah, the 100%. The best defense in the league. I, not just the league, Plax. I oh, thought the this world. was going to be oh, the, the world, greatest Craig. defense we've ever seen oh. in the NFL <laughs> where I thought Buddy Ryan to be rolling over in his grave going, I no longer altered the greatest yeah. defense in football history. And I want to own that because that's on me. I bought into the hype. I bought into all the pomp and all the circumstances. But, Craig, you would yeah. agree stopping it, giving a team 13 points yeah. should win you a football game. It should win you right. a lot of football with, games. With that defense. With that yes, doubt but about here's it. the problem, Plax. And all the focus is on Zach Wilson, rightfully so. He's a brutal quarterback. He just sucks, right? Can't play NFL quarterback. And I'm not sure if he ever will. I don't buy the notion of he's making a progress because I don't see it. And he fails the eye test. But at the same time, no sacks, yeah. no interceptions, right. no uh, you know, hurried passes by a quarterback. Right. We've got this vaunted defense. And, well, yes. Uh, statistically, they have gotten the job done. They're only giving up, what, 13 points a game. Mm -hmm. Three games in, they need to be better. But right. how much better? Yeah, ha a lot better. I haven't been in an in a NFL locker room for 12 years. I just can't believe that the absence of one man has the whole morale of a team uh, at this point. It, this is why this guy's in the middle of all these people, because he's in the middle of everything. Yeah. And you look at all the arguing that's going on back and forth on the sideline, and Aaron Rodgers said these kids need to grow up. You got to realize, Gary Wilson's only in his second season. Right. Zach Wilson is, is, is in, his in his third season. So they ha haven't had the opportunity to grow together. And now when you have, you know, Nathaniel Hackett and Joe Douglas and Robert Salah uh, get in front of that podium a month ago and feed us all the baloney about how much this kid has grown and how much better he, ha he has gotten. When he has he had the opportunity to get better? Right. Because ever since Aaron Rodgers got to this team, he's been on the center, so this guy hasn't been taking any snaps. And now 
you're looking at it from a from a team standpoint, being being in this locker room. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're like, look, man, let's not let one person sabotage sure. this whole season. So how, we have to make a decision that is best for the team. How do you guys react in a locker room? Because I think you're Robert. Everybody Sala, knows it, man. Th- right. So at some point. Does the coach, Robert Sala, lose the locker room because you guys are frustrated that he keeps making you play with a guy that doesn't give you a chance to win? No, what loses the locker room is not just about holding them accountable. It's not admitting to the team we're in a bad place, right? right? Because there's nothing worse than sitting there. Because I've seen it happen with Ty Bowles, right? We weren't playing well as the Jets. They were like, our defense was okay. Our offense were all over the place. But at the same time, there were things going in that locker room that he just, you know, there was times where he just was like, hey, man, this is where we're at. This is where we're not at. People like like what what people don't give credit to is players can adjust. Yeah, players can get better. What they do, what the media and I think we we don't do a better job at is realizing that sometimes is you don't want to give up on the hope because when you lose hope in the locker room, yeah, you lose over. the locker room. Got so it. you got to continue to promote hope. Well, it ain't gonna be, be pretty because they do play the Kansas City Chiefs next. And oh goody, it's a uh, prime time game. I mean, no, hey, no. hey, within yeah. the next month of the New York Jets, I'm hopeful. looking forward nothing to the to Denver Broncos and the, and the New York Jets. Maybe <laughs> we right. can win two of those games. And if I'm the New York Jets, I know this is way in advance. I'm glad you brought up Plax. I might start Trevor Simeon as a get-back game against the Denver this, Broncos. He will play this week. I believe so. Zach, Zach Wilson will start this game. Yeah. Nah, and if not. he doesn't play well in the first quarter and nah. the second quarter, Trevor, uh, uh, Simeon. Trevor Simeon will play in this game. Well, you got to get off the practice squad to do that. Yeah. But wow. that would not shock to play for that? Yeah, I've seen oh, it. Oh, I've seen it worse. But, but like, worse, yeah. worse. Like, bad, oh, bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, when he went to New England last year, went yeah, 9-22. It's 77 yards. That's pretty last bad. Last week was pretty bad. Last week was bad, but that's yeah. really Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.